Welcome to EuroPCR 2021. Welcome to this expert session. My name is Nicolas van Miegem from the Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, and it's a true pleasure to be joined by two experts, Fabian Bras from the University of Bern and Peter Ludicke from Essen University. In the next 15 minutes or so, we're gonna discuss uh, a transcatheter edge-to-edge a repair system uh, by Edwards Life Sciences. This is the Pascal system because there has been a lot of uh, changes going on in the space of uh, tear or transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair. Just to give you a brief heads up on the portfolio, um, Edwards Life Sciences started with the CardioBand system, which is a annulopathy device in 2015, and then changed uh, or introduced transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair with Pascal in 2019. In 2020, we saw then a new device and device iteration, which is the Pascal ACE, and we're gonna zoom in on Pascal and Pascal ACE. So uh, first up, I would uh, like to ask Fabien to give an overview of Pascal and the new features within Pascal ACE. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Thank you, Peter. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you and, uh, and discuss this very interesting topic. Uh, so, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Nicolas, I think there was a, there was a need for a development in that, uh, in that domain and, uh, and uh, the operation of new device is uh, a new technique as well is something that, uh, that will benefit our patients. Uh, and if I'm thinking of the, you know, the complexity of the mitral valve in comparison, for example, to the, to the Arctic valve, I think there is space as for the, in the TAVI, uh, space for for different uh, for his different devices to be able to better uh, address the anatomy the complex anatomy in some of the patient uh, we we treat. So you know the the the, the Pascal device has some um, um, special uh, features I would say, and one of them is a central spacer, uh, which is actually intended to to on one side to fill the gap inside of the of the regurgitant area, uh, but also uh, to reduce a bit the tension on the leaflet. Um, one of the other features I, I also like, and we, we may discuss this a bit uh, with, with Peter and you as well, is the elongation of the device. You know, in some situations, uh, you can be trapped or in interaction with some of the cordae. And uh, the, the, the ability to elongate the device completely is something uh, that can be very useful in, in, in this kind of situation. The device uh, from the design is, uh, as, is, uh, is uh, from, from Nitinol, so it's a, it's a very flexible device. And sometimes you can see when you implant it, you can see it moving uh, with the leaflet. And so this is also something that may um, uh, have a very physiological effect on, on the leaflet. And finally, and that's something also very important, uh, the Pascal device was actually the first one to introduce uh, independent clasping, independent grasping of the, of the leaflet. And uh, it's probably also, also something that, uh, that uh, most interventionalists use uh, today. And uh, there has been, as you mentioned, a, a second size, a smaller size uh, of the device that has been introduced uh, quite recently because the Pascal, uh, the, the original one is quite a, a broad one from the beginning. And the ACE uh, has some um, uh, interesting um, uh, features to be combined uh, or, or used separately uh, from, the, from, the, from the original Pascal device. So it's a bit narrower. It has a small spacer, which is smaller than the, the original Pascal. Uh, and and uh, it, it may a little bit of navigation and also I would say uh, the the artifacts produced by on echo uh, a little bit less than with with the big size of the, of the device. It has newly also a stabilizer because you know some of the limitation uh, we have to mention on this uh, system are probably uh, the the um, uh, some of uh, of unintended movement or the less uh, stability, which is uh, actually an advantage because you have more flexibility. But this limitation uh, will be a little bit addressed by this new uh, stabilizer that has been introduced just a few a few a few days ago. So yeah. I think that's the most important uh, future of this of this platform for now. So, so Peter, in, in your opinion, how clinically relevant is the introduction of Pascal ACE? In other words, do you see a high uptake of this device iteration? Well, first of all, I, I, I need to confess that um, we started to primarily use the Pascal device because um, when the Pascal was entered to, or entered the European market, no one knew what will the indication be. And so we decided to start a uh, prospective clinical trial to validate this at our center and started to treat every 
um, mitral condition with the Pascal um, device. And so we gained a lot of experience and all the features um, Fabian already mentioned um, changed over time in my, uh, um, in my opinion, what is important and what part of the procedure improves with Pascal. And um, I think when I need to highlight a certain feature of the Pascal device, then this definitely has changed over time. And when at the very beginning, I, we were very focused on functional MR and the effect of the central spacer, we learned more and more that the supposed to be um, safety features of the device like the um, like the independent grasping with the single row of the retention elements, which are very atraumatic, are not only safety features but also help you to improve the procedure because you learn to work very precisely. You try to optimize your results in every single case. And at the very beginning, it was just a technical challenge to introduce this new device. And in the meantime, it has become a challenge to, um, to create absolutely perfect results. And I think all the aspects um, that um, has been mentioned at the beginning come together to make this a very interesting technology. And we, uh, I, th I think it, it can be a game changer for the future. What is the relative proportion of Pascal Ace and Pascal in your in your practice. Do you use more Pascal Ace or do you still prefer the original Pascal? This is a very interesting question, and this is something that definitely changes from sender to sender. On the tricuspid side, I, the um, Pascal Ace rate is 100% now, mm. and on the on the mitral side, I would say it's still 80 to 20%. Um, what we don't do in the meantime is to mixing the devices. So when we started with Pascal Ace in the mitral side, then we stay with Pascal Ace. When we started with uh, the, the former Pascal device, the Pascal 10 device, then we um, stay with Pascal 10. Okay, so transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair has gained a lot of attraction this year. Also with this recent ESC consensus document that followed uh, MitraFR and especially also Coept. Um, maybe it's good to, to briefly look uh, at, uh, at the scientific background of Pascal. Uh, Fabian, the, the, CLASP, um, the CLASP prospective study, um, anything new there? I think there's follow-up up to two years now. Exactly, Nicolas. So the, the CLASP study has been the study that uh, allowed actually the Pascal device to, uh, to gain C mark. It's a single arm, but Core Lab adjudicated study. And I think what we can see here uh, on the long term data that we have a durable result, uh, which is actually for a first generation device, because we don't need to forget that, that actually this device is the same as uh, we have been implanted uh, uh, in, in 2016, actually. That was the first in human. Um, of the Pascal device. And what we see is an about 97% uh, uh, reduction or 97% of the patient having a reduction of uh, grade two uh, or less with that device. That's correspond actually to what we know uh, from, uh, from other experience. And uh, what is also quite impressive for this, uh, for this first generation device that we see an about 80% reduction to grade one or, or zero. Um, mitral regurgitation that was uh, sustainable until two years uh, in the in the class study. So I think encouraging results uh, for for this uh, for this device. And and Peter, how does that translate into um, everyday practice? So there are some real world experiences. Um, how is it? Uh, what is your opinion on that? Well, Edwards provides a commercial data set because all the proctors report the acute results after the procedures to a central database. And this is a database, the biggest database to date of more than 2,000 cases um, with after the CE mark now. And it's impressive to see um, that they reflect the study data. So it's um, despite a lot of the centers are just starting with the new technology, they are able to create excellent results. And there is an analysis that shows that it takes up to 25 cases that you work on a really excellent level with this new device to gain a result of zero or one plus in more than 80% of your patients. And when you look on the first real data, 
from a German data set that is already published from the Cologne group or a recent publication from the colleagues from Badenhausen, you can see that these, um, these first results translate also into clinical trials and it will be interesting whether this will be also the case in the randomized blast studies. Yeah, I think it's already important yeah, that, uh, that the favorable clinical data from the prospective CLASP study are reproducible in clinical practice. So that is uh, an important uh, finding, I guess. Um, back to you, Fabien. Um, we, also, we all know that we have functional MR and degenerative MR. Are those both targets for the PASCAL or do you need to be more selective with PASCAL? You know, I think, uh, of course, you can use this device with, with both uh, type of mitral regurgitation. There is no limitation for that. Um, and, and in particular with patient, you know, I'm thinking of secondary MR with patient with uh, severe tethering, uh, you will be in some case with uh, the P10, with the original one, will be very uh, confident in, in uh, clasping the leaflet. Uh, regarding degenerative MR, I'm, I'm even, you know, for, for some complicated anatomy, actually, you know, the first uh, study that has been done and the first in human study has been actually uh, done in patients with uh, challenging anatomy, with, which were not, uh, where a perfect result was not expected with the mitral clip. And I think this, this device is, is absolutely um, able to uh, reduce uh, MR in, in that patient in a very safe way. And I think that's, that's one of the, of the important message. Uh, with, with this device, you are able to reposition, as Peter mentioned, you are able to optimize uh, leaflet grasping um, in a very atraumatic way. And I think in particular with the PTEN, but also with the ACE device because of the, the nitinol design and the way also the device is closing, you know, it's not an active closure, it's a passive memory of shape closure of the device. Uh, you can use it in challenging anatomy. And we typically, when we are concerned about tension on the leaflet, if the leaflet is very short or if the maybe the posterior or if you have calcification on the leaflet, then in some situation we prefer to use uh, the Pascal device uh, to minimize the risk of, uh, of leaflet damage. Hmm. So this technology also seems attractive in the tricuspid space. So what about Pascal for tricuspid regurgitation, Peter? Well, this is something I mentioned at the very beginning. This um, Pascal ACE is our working horse in the tricuspid side. And all the features that were mentioned by Fabienne um, just in his last comment come together on the tricuspid side, especially on the tricuspid side, because the atraumatic working is something that is really impressive. Even in octa and nonagenarians, you can clasp a lot of times into the very degenerative valves and I've never seen a laceration. I've never seen um, a tear in the valve. And I think this is uh, an important aspect, especially when we work on the tricuspid side where we have this very filigree structure of the, of, the, of the valve. So I think this comes together with the um, option to elongate the device, to free you when you're entangled with the cordae. So I think it's, um, perfectly suited to work on the tricuspid valve. Okay, so with that, I think we can wrap up this uh, expert session. I think it's fair to say that the Pascal device is a very attractive technology that introduced these new features of the spacer and separate clasping. Um, I think acute procedural success is quite high and we're also seeing uh, durable results. With that, I'd like to thank Peter and Fabian for, the, for their participation in this session, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.